In this Black Myth Wukong video, I bring you a complete guide on the best farming items in this game. These items consist of giving you buffs towards XP and will gained, item drops and much much more, so let's get into it. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm giving away a copy of Black Myth Wukong. I'm actually giving away a copy tomorrow. Now, if you want to win it for yourself or a friend, it's as simple as this. Drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below and make sure you are subbed. The more I see you active across my Black Myth Wukong videos, the more of a chance you have of winning. So I'll pick one person from the comment section and announce them tomorrow evening. So good luck everybody. Okay, so there are multiple items you can equip which buff your character. The ones we check out today guys buff your gains in regards to XP earned, will earned, item drops earned and more. So let's go. Firstly let's check out the items we'll cover today and also if you're missing any of the 4 items I will cover today, timestamps are down below within the video description as always. So the first one we have is the gold flora hairpin. Uh, this slightly increases will gained from defeating enemies. Then we have the skull of tail treasure. This moderately increases the chance of obtaining materials upon killing an enemy. We then have the Lantern Holder. This moderately increases the will gained. We then have the Celestial Registry Tablet. This slightly increases experience gained from defeating enemies. And lastly, we have the Golden Carp. This moderately increases the chance of obtaining materials from defeating enemies enemies so yeah some great great items which will definitely help in regards to leveling up and finding those items okay so these items are mostly tied behind you having to do a quest or unlock a secret area but in this video i won't leave anything out so let's get into it people so the first one we will cover is the gold flora hairpin this is an item you can unlock first and it's within the chapter 2 area or the region. Uh, it comes from a secret vendor which I've already made a video on but I will just repeat what's needed right here. Okay so this starts from the chapter 2 area of Fright Cliff and the Shrine of Rock Rest Flat. So from this point guys you want to head into the cave behind you and follow the path I take on screen now. So you will eventually come to this blue glowing rock type thing. This guy is actually an enemy, he's called the Mother of Stone. And once you attack this thing, it doesn't fight you back, but it spawns in lows of enemies that do attack you. Now upon you defeating this rock, this stone, you are rewarded the stone essence. This is a key item to what we need here. Okay, so from this point guys, head back to that shrine of rock rest flat. And from this point, follow the path I take on the screen now to where you encounter this vendor. Now this is where my footage messed up, but it's basically this what happens. So once you come here and talk to this rock man thingy, he asks you to grab the item we just got from the mother of stone, that stone essence. Now upon you giving him this item, he then tries to play you off like a fool. Here guys you now have to attack him, once you attack him this starts an encounter with him in which you have to defeat him. Now upon you defeating him you can now recover that stone essence uh, which when you do you are rewarded the azure dust spell this allows you to transform into a rock uh, you are immune to all four banes and it builds up might when you are hit pretty cool now upon you talking to him from this point he mentions treasures or something along those lines but you need to give him time so from this point guys go to any shrine, go rest at any shrine, the closest one of the rock rest flat shrine makes more sense, so go here and rest. Upon you doing this, head back to him. Now once you come back to him guys, he's now a vendor selling some pretty good items. So yes, once you unlock this vendor guys, you can now purchase gold flow hairpin from him. 
Okay, so we now move on to the Skull of Turtle Treasure. This is a helm, by the way. And this is an item that drops randomly, I believe, from an enemy within Chapter 3. So from the Valley of Ecstasy area, the Longevity Road Shrine, follow the path I take on screen now to this enemy, who it drops from. Now if you don't get it first time, reload the area, rinse and repeat and you should eventually get it guys. Next up guys, we have the Lantern Holder. Uh, this, when you have it equipped guys, will increase those will gains. Okay, so this comes within chapter 4. You want to come to the area of the village of Langsi, I believe that's pronounced, and the shrine of the estate of the shoe. From here, guys, follow the short path I take on the screen now to this enemy. I actually got this drop first time. I don't know if it's a guaranteed drop, but if it isn't, guys, rinse and repeat the farm over and over until you get this thing to drop. Simple as that. Next up guys, the Celestial Registry Tablet. So this is an item that you just come and grab, but it comes from the secret Purple Cloud Mountain area, which you first have to unlock. And now again, this is a video I've already covered, and again, I'll just repeat what's needed for this video right here to unlock this area. So how do you get to this secret area? Well guys, you can do so as soon as you reach chapter four. Okay, so to start guys, you need to get to the webbed hollow shrine of the upper hollow. As you progress the game guys, you come to this, you can't really miss it. Now when you are here, you need to make your way to the shattered jade shrine. This isn't easy to find, so follow the path I take on screen now. Okay, so from this shrine, guys, we now need to go and fight the first of a two time encounter with the enemy, the Venom Daoist. So, following this path you see me take on screen now, you will come to this cocoon, which you need to repeatedly hit. Upon you doing this, this boss will spawn in. I will state, though, it is a simple fight, so do what you gotta do here. Okay, so once you've defeated this guy, you now need to progress the game until you reach the Temple of Yellow Flowers. It's a place you can't miss and uh, this shrine as well, it's one you definitely have to come to. It's called the Court of Illumination. So once you get here guys, follow the path I take on screen now. Coming back on yourself as you would have, progressing to find this shrine and travelling up these hills to where you'll eventually come to a slope which you have to go down where you'll find this boss is hiding. 
This is the second encounter you'll have with this enemy. So upon you taking him out, he tells you to go and find that needle and basically creates a path for you to enter into the secret area of the Purple Cloud Mountain. So once you have this area unlocked from the Valley of Bloom Shrine, the first you will come to here, follow the path I take on screen now to go come and grab this item. Okay, so lastly guys, we have the golden cup. This one is much, much longer to get as it drops from the yellow loon, who is an absolute beast of a boss at the end of the loon questline. A quest that starts real early on and goes into like chapter 4. So again I've already made a video on this actual uh, quest line because there's so many other great items tied to it. Uh, I'll just repeat again what's needed for this video right here. Okay so this all starts with you having to get the loon scales. Without these you won't have access to these bosses so you do need to get these so let's go grab them first. Firstly, you need to take on and defeat the Rat King of Flowing Sands and his Prince Son. His son goes by the name of the Second Prince of Flowing Sands. Now you find these within the Sandgate Village and from the Village Entrance Shrine, you want to follow this direction I take on screen now to this boss fight. So when you get here guys, you will find a Rat King and his son the Prince. Now you can defeat either or, in whichever order you want, both lead you on the same path. It's just there's a slight difference in outcome. Now if you defeat the Rat King first, the Rat Prince enrages and becomes a little more difficult to defeat. But if this is the order in which you do this, upon you defeating the Enraged Rat Prince, you get the Pungent Flesh Chunk which you can indeed use to summon the next boss we have to take on. Now if you defeat the Rat Prince first, the Rat King, his father, runs off, which is the order I recommend you doing this in, but it really doesn't matter. So upon you overcoming this fight, you now want to access that nearby shrine, obviously. You then want to push forward in the direction I take on screen now. You will then come to this point right here, where if you defeat the Rat Prince first and left his father alive, the Rat King will summon his other son, the first Prince of the Flowing Sands. Now if you didn't do that in this order, you can then just use that fleshy chunk that you got for defeating the, the Prince's son to summon this boss. Again, the first Prince of the Flowing Sands. Either or guys, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to use this first Prince of the Flowing Sands to open up the secret path for us to push through. This is done by standing next to this big red wall and having the first Prince of the Flowing Sands run at you head first. If you time this right and dodge out of the way, 
him running head first, he will leave a crack in that wall, which you can go through after you've taken out this boss. Now, if you've already progressed past this uh, without breaking that wall and already taken out this boss, you can use other means to come back here and crack your own way through. So to do this guys, if you have the Wandering White Spirit, you can use this headbutt to break your way through the wall. Now if you're yet to get this, it's quite easy. Head to the early game shrine of outside the forest within the Black Wind Mountain. Push slightly forward and on your right hand side, you will see the Wandering White enemy. Upon you taking him out and claiming what's here, when you next visit any shrine, you will see that option to retrieve spirits. Once you've done this, you can then equip the Wandering White within your inventory and then just use him to headbutt this wall. It's as simple as that. So once you travel through that gap in that wall, a chest awaits you. Once you open that chest, you are rewarded the long scales. And this is the item which unlocks the secret waterfall and that dragon boss. So once you have this guys, you now want to head back to your nearest shrine and travel back to the outside the forest shrine within the Black Wind Mountain, yes, where the Wandering White is found. Now once you are here guys, follow the path I take on screen now to this waterfall. Now once you get here guys, clear out the ads uh, that are here and then you can dispel or examine the waterfall which leads you then into this dragon boss fight. Okay so you are now at the first of these four Loong bosses. And this one is the Red Loong boss who is, I'm not going to lie, pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Okay so once you take him out, you are done here and now we move on to this second loom boss, which is Black Loom. He's located within chapter two. Okay, so once you have the loon scales, you need to make your way to the Rockfest Flat Shrine upon Thright Cliff within chapter two. If you don't have this shrine unlocked yet, follow this path from the more so popular shrine of Sangay Village, the village of despair. On your way from this shrine, you also bypass the school hideout shrine too. So yeah, if you already have that, I will timestamp it from this point forward in the video description onto that rock first flat shrine. Okay, so from the rock first flat shrine, follow this path to the sand fall, where you uncover the path to the secret black loon boss. So this boss fight is actually quite an easy one. The only part I will consider slightly difficult is his phase where he slams the floor uh, and sends out pulses of electricity. These you can dodge but what would be easier is if you just jump up onto a rock. They don't hit you. Other than this his attacks are easy to read and are pretty slow. Okay so once you take this guy out we can now push on to the third loom boss and his name is Sion Loom. So as you will progress through the game within chapter 3 you will eventually come to the Bitter Lake Turtle Island Shrine. This is a shrine right near the Kangjin Star boss fight, a fight you must come to and progress past by the way. 
So from this shrine, the Scion Long can be found just down to the right as seen by the path I take on screen now. Now I won't lie, this dude was a pain in the ass to defeat. I was legit running out of ideas before I somehow got him down. It's just one of those ones you just have to be persistent with and the more you fight him the more you will learn his attack so it's all about experience here. But he can be devastating no matter how strong you are, a simple combo by him can basically take your health completely off so yeah keep that in mind. So upon you taking him down you want to grab the chest behind where this encounter is also. But you will from this boss get the mountain shaking claw which is one of the main materials used in crafting that mythical golden loon staff. Okay so we now move on to the final boss of this quest, Yellow Luke. So this fella can be found deep within chapter 4 where you need to find a secret area. Okay so once you get to chapter 4 guys uh, you need to be within the webbed hollow area and you need to come to the cliff of oblivion shrine this is a shrine i'm pretty sure you can't miss with your progression from this shrine though you need to make your way up to the relief of the fallen loon shrine this one is pretty hard to find so follow the path i take on screen now now you do want to use that cloud step at the right times to make sure your progress is smooth and uninterrupted here Okay, so from this shrine guys, literally right nearby is the Yellow Loon boss fight and the final point to overcome within this quest line. Now what I will say is, this guy is utterly brutal, but I do feel Scion Lung was probably harder. It's all about being persistent with these dudes, but yes guys, upon you taking out that Yellow Loon boss, you get the Golden Carp. Enjoy it guys and there we have it four items to make your farming experiences much much better On that note the end of the video has arrived if you enjoyed it leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more Be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys I will see you on that next one